Hi and welcome to the second in the series of videos in, in, on the Henglong military truck. Um, today's video I'm going to be concentrating on the disassembly ahead of putting hobby grade radio gear in. Just to show you what I think I'm planning on putting in at the moment and this may change as I go along because I haven't done this before. Um, <clears throat> Planning, planning to use a Spectrum car transmitter. This is a three channel model and I don't particularly need a tiny receiver I don't think so I'm probably going to use this one here the SR300. I'm going to be using a fairly small servo. This one here um, is an Emax analog servo. Um, fairly small but not tiny but certainly much smaller than a standard servo I'll just see if I've got one of those in the drawer here there we go a standard servo so if you just compare the two quite a bit smaller but I don't think that we're really going to need anything as powerful as that and space is going to be a little bit of a premium so um, I'm going to stick with the smaller servo um, for speed controller at the moment I'm planning on using this which is just an Mtronix Viper Sportune 20. Again it's it's probably overkill but this was pretty cheap. I got this at the Modern Engineers exhibition show on Sunday as well. I think it was about £11. Um, it doesn't have instant res reverse so you have to do the double tap thing. That's not really a problem to me I don't think. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm probably going to be losing a lot of this wire because again that's going to take up space inside the truck but at the moment planning on using this speed controller we'll see how we go I might have to go to something smaller but we'll see right just put these bits out of the way and get back to the truck now when taking anything like this apart you need to minimize the amount of parts that you that you take off but at the same time you need to remember that um, the more you take off the more you've got to put back together again and the more you've got to remember. <clears throat> Fortunately I'm recording this on the video so if I really get confused I guess that I can always go back and look at it. So I haven't done this before so I think I'm going to start with a screw behind the cab here. That, that seems to be a good idea. I don't think that there are too many screws actually Holding, holding the um, cab on, so that's the other one behind the cab. Needs to be just a little bit looser. That's loose, and it's held on at the front by something. Let's have a look. That's pretty loose in there. Ah, so literally just two screws. I keep those safely over there. Holds holds the whole cab on. So, and the the um, cab is attached to everything else by these two bars here, which which are for the lights. Um, <clears throat> I think that I am going to put lights back into this but I'm certainly not going to be using that board so the first thing to do well actually the first thing to do is to disconnect the battery because you kind of never know what's live and I'm going to chop those quite close to the board so they as much wire as possible well that's pretty good and I can see that there are just two screws here so when we so when we come to putting windows inside the cab that should be pretty straightforward. Put that to one side. Right, so we 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 um we um have here a little motor which um having seen one or two other people's videos, I know is the same size as a mini Z motor. Um, that's quite useful because if I wanted to get um, a motor with either higher turns or or more poles inside it, i.e. for um, higher torque, a slower running motor. It wouldn't be very hard to replace and also if I was to burn this motor out um, 
these are very very cheap to replace a very standard kind of item right, so this all looks fairly straightforward so we, ha we have a couple of screws here let's take these out there's one and actually they're the same size as the screws which I just took out of the back of the cab so I don't particularly have to separate them that's that there is, there is a hole in this piece here which will almost let the plug fit through but not quite and we can and we can see what's, what's going on inside this piece all unplugs just pop that to one side as well Right, this is this is the um, main circuit board that'll be coming off. Again, exactly the same screws we've seen before, and you'll notice here that the motor that they use for the steering servo seems to be probably the same size as the main drive motor so that might even act as a spare I'm going to plug it unplug everything from the board just because it seems better than cutting everything and so and so that's the main board right what I'm going to want to do <clears throat> is I'm going to want to give myself some room to mount the servo and I'm going to want the servo to pretty well go in the same place as this arm that already exists there. So we have some screws and I'm just going to start unscrewing. tend to get lots of interesting little bits and pieces when you take these things apart and I must admit I do often keep the small parts and the screws which um, come off models even if I'm discarding them you never know when you when you might want some of these things at the same time you need to be a bit strict <clears throat> about throwing away the stuff that you know you're never ever going to use because you just end up with too much stuff otherwise it's kind of like a big servo really right this this is clearly connected onto the steering arm here and so I'm going to need to undo the screw at the bottom as well There you go. And all of and all of that is out. Um, if I just split the case, you can see that once again we've got another one of those motors. All right, I'll just move these bits and pieces out of the way. Right. Um, these these two white arms here, which, which are used in the steering, look like they need a little bit of leverage to pull off. That's it. And then there's another white piece here, which looks as if. If I just get a pair of pliers, it 
will twist around and, and drop out. Right, so we pretty well have everything removed. Now the speed controller comes with its own on-off switch, but we have one in place here which is mounted, and to be quite honest, um, I think that I'm probably going to prefer to, to use the switch which is already in place and it's quite nice and small, rather than um, trying to find a, a, a way to mount the one that comes with the speed controller. So it'll just be a case of snipping the wires and soldering it on. Right. So, that I think is basically disassembly done. Okay, um, I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the next stage straight away because that didn't exactly take me very long and um, start thinking about fitting the radio.